Hey everyone, Thought Steve here, here in the Daily Division, here with 2363 Triple Helix, Chesapeake DCMP winners. They're gonna be talking about their amazing robot, small intake, but they're really unique and steady arm here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Get your off-season events an additional 25 to 100 percent more viewership by streaming it on Fun. We'll donate our Twitch or YouTube channel and help promote your event. Contact admin at firstupdatesnow.com to reserve your off-season date. All right, Jonathan, talk to us about our, your mechanical, your intake, your arm. You saw earlier, you showed me earlier that your intake, your arm is able to just stay in this place. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so the arm itself is something called a virtual four bar and that holds this gripper steady and level parallel to the floor whatever position it's at and so the way that works is it's chain driven at the base by two neos um, and then these surgical tubing pieces hold the arm steady at whatever location it's at so the only time the motor needs to be active is when it's actually moving the arm for our gripper up at the front we have a variable intake with two spinning wheels connected to mini neos and these are pneumatically controlled so they can open and close to fit either a cone or a cube. We have a beam brake sensor which is located right here and so whenever a game piece hits that sensor it'll activate a piston here which pushes against the gripper to pop it out and that way we're not dragging game pieces along the floor as we're going. Now, tell me about your your arm exactly. Like how it's a vir virtual four bar, all the chains. How well has it been doing it for you? Honestly, it's been really reliable. Uh, I've been really impressed with how it's performed. We haven't had any issues with it in a match. Um, sometimes the chains will come undone in transport, but that's an issue that's it's five minutes to fix. All right. Now let's hand it over to Henry. Tell us about any innovations or improvements you've done from your couple of mat, uh, competition you've done, right? Chesapeake winners, what changes have you guys made and what improvements have you made over the season as well? Yeah, so um, part of our design process is actually changing. So we started off the season with probably I'd say about 30 different ideas, give or take. Um, we narrowed it down to the top 10 and we prototyped. So for instance, we had a belt driven design, we had a roller driven design, um, a flap driven design. Um, and we did quantitative testing to figure out which design would be best. Now this current design was the design that we picked due to its reliability and its versatility in picking up both cones and cubes. And the addition of this small uh, polycarbonate bar on the bottom, which allows us to occasionally flip cones if we need to. Now some changes that we noticed between competitions was specifically that this arm um, and these rollers per se, um, occasionally will grab the cone too high or the cube in such a way that it's difficult to spit out. So just this morning, actually, we uh, had fabricated these bars in the gripper before we had left, um, and we added these gray wheels, which helped to, one, format the uh, cube in such a way that it's grabbed and orientated correctly, but also gives it extra grip when it's releasing the cone, or cube, rather. Uh, it also grabs up higher on the cone slightly, uh, which gives it better grip and more surface area. All right, now let's hand it over to uh, Joshua. You guys don't seem to be using a limelight, but you guys are using four camera, three cameras and special casings. Tell me about your vision system because it seems to be uh, custom. Yep, so this year we developed a custom vision system using Python and we have all three cameras, which are grayscale global shutter cameras, connected to a mini PC on a robot. And this allows us to simultaneously process all three streams using April tags to estimate, to update our global estimation of where we are in the field. We combine that with our gyro sensor, the NavX2, and our encoders on our wheels to get one accurate estimate of where we are in the field at all times. And this can be fed into our path following program, which Justin can talk about. Yeah, perfect transition into Justin to talk about your path planning. You guys have a special name for it, so tell us about your path planning. 
Okay, so Triple Helix has been working on a very long-term project for Autonomous. Um, it's basically called Helix Navigator. So it's a trajectory optimization-based application that uh, allows you to plan your trajectories um, using waypoints. And then you, you use the, um, the generate button will generate it. I'm not going to do it now because it's already generated, but it allows you to, uh, to visually align things on the field. It's very similar to apps like Path Planner. Um, but it has a few advantages. It has more features with um, things like units and like uh, it's some convenience things. But um, basically, we use these and then we export them to our, our robot code. Uh, but what we use is we actually use the vision system with our auto. So what we can do is use a, a PID controller to align, make sure that our estimated pose from our our cameras always aligns with the um, with where we're supposed to be on the trajectory that's generated by Helix Navigator. So um, that allows us to, for example, when we lift our arm up and to go place a cube or a cone, it will auto automatically correct for errors that have, have accumulated from our odometry over time. Um, so yeah, basically that allows us to get really accurate autos, um, and we were able to place several game pieces. Um, but yeah, and also one quick plug though is that this application is available online free for any FRC teams. It's used by several already. So yeah, that's So fun. when teams are planning on using it, what information do they need to put in to make it compatible with their robot? So it, it works on a, a physics simulation. So basically, right now we don't have all of the, the official, I mean, so you could do characterization to collect data on your robot and um, plug that into the app and it would give you more ideal um, results, but for now we have it just where you basically can set your bumpers, uh, size, your wheel diameter, and your mass of your robot, moment of inertia approximated, and then it, once you enter all the physics parameters, then it allows you to uh, to plan the trajectory, uh, and it won't, it, it won't violate certain constraints on the robot, like each mo swerve module is accounted for, so that each one won't uh, accelerate too quickly and it won't uh, go to a too high of a speed. It's a really unique system. Now, speaking on a bit of your paths, I also want to talk about your presets on your arm. How exactly does that also function? Yeah, so our operator, uh, so do you mean during auto? Or auto, just in general? Auto, in general. Okay. Yeah, so, so our operator is able to control, they don't have to do any uh, manual movement of the arm everything is done automatically so you just hold a button down and I think this is the high placement or mid maybe um, oh yeah so now I can eject it so basically we are, we're using some PID controllers on the, the arm using our absolute and relative encoders to so that that way when we restart the robot it's in the right place and uh, it allows us to to always go to the same height every time we, we want it to, and it's easy for the operator to control. Well, Triple Helix, thank you so much for walking us through your robot. Again, congratulations on the great success you guys had, Chesapeake winners, really impressive robot, and excited to see what you guys do here on the Daily uh, Division. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.